Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where we're having a weird double video day. <laughs> so first and first, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the Databricks news that's coming out recently. So a couple of key headlines, and I just want to have a quick chat about what that means. And then we're doing a deeper dive into one of the most recent white papers as a separate video, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, so I think what I'm talking about is the latest funding round, who's been funding it, what that tells us, some news that is shockingly related to that in terms of suddenly now Databricks is on Google Cloud Platform, and then what we can infer and that what that actually means to you as someone thinking about moving into Databricks, you as someone working with Databricks, kind of what, does that, what does that mean for the rest of us? Um, as always, do not forget to like and subscribe and let us know down in the comments what you think of the news and anything else you'd like us to talk about in the future. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the article in question. So we've got this, Databricks raises $1 billion as part of Series G investment funding. So it is having a big, big growth spurt, opened up further investment, and they've had some big, big investment names come in and buy up a stake in Databricks as a show of faith and kind of jumping on the, uh, the rocket ship that it currently is Databricks. And this is very, very different to what we saw uh, last year last year with the Snowflake uh, IPO. So that's Snowflake going public and suddenly it's kind of going, their shares are out on the market. They're on, not Fetzy, whatever the, whatever the US one is, NASDAQ. <laughs> and suddenly seeing that kind of valuation just explosion. This is not Databricks reaching that point yet. They are talking about IPO. I'm sure we'll probably see IPO later this year. This is another round of funding before they reach that point. So it's kind of private companies investing into Databricks. And we're seeing some quite big names here, and it's quite telling some of those things uh, that we're seeing. So lots of uh, investment companies, lots of kind of investment funds for growing up tech companies. Um, but some of them, some of the big ones that we expect to see, so Amazon Web Services, putting in more money, being a real stake of it. Now, previously, we'd seen Microsoft as one of those investors. Again, they are still here as a continuing investor. So it's interesting to see that AWS, despite the fact Databricks were originally just on Amazon Web Services, they're now buying a stake of it. They're now bringing in and being, putting kind of a much firmer backing behind Databricks uh, that we can see. Now, these are the other two interesting ones. So Capital G, I had no idea who they were. I was like, what? Hmm? And turns out that is Alphabet Independent uh, Investment Group. Alphabet being the guys behind Google. So it's not really that much of a shock, really, that we're seeing this big investment that are purchasing a stake, that are putting funding into Databricks to say, you know, you've got our backing. And then a little while later going, ta-da, Databricks is now on GCP. It's now available on the Google Cloud platform. So that means that Google is, Databricks is now available on all three cloud platforms and all of those platforms, all of those companies behind those platforms have a stake in Databricks. So it's kind of a, a real sign of faith, a real sign of that strategic alignment uh, and that's good stuff. What I haven't seen before is that Salesforce uh, put a bit of a stake into uh, Databricks. And that's interesting. And I don't know what's going to come of that. That is, we will see. I don't know if there's any, anything we're going to find out about that. I don't currently know anything about it. But uh, yeah, interesting stuff. So all of that is just generally good. All of that is essentially more show of faith, more ability for Databricks to grow quicker, to fund more innovation, to do more stuff and essentially buys them a bit of freedom to essentially kind of keep that acceleration in that kind of lake house journey that they're pushing in, which is awesome. But what I want to talk about is the that kind of the, the next phase of news, the, oh, by the way, Databricks is now on GCP. Now, I've, I spoke to a lot of people and I was like, that's crazy, that's, that's really cool. And like, well, does it, why do I care? I mean, certainly a lot of people in the Microsoft space, people are fairly tied to their cloud platforms, right? All of my orchestration, I'm doing a data factory. I've got loads of things using Active Directory. I'm quite tied to that Microsoft ecosystem. Um, but, but there's also a massive backlash against proprietary systems. I mean, so certainly back in the day when I was excitedly using U-SQL and using Data Lake Analytics in Azure and building out crazy, crazy, on-demand big data querying um, systems, when they suddenly went, by the way, this is going away, everyone went, oh, my code isn't portable. I can't put it anywhere. What am I going to do? So portability of code, not being locked into a proprietary language is a huge consideration for a lot of people. 
Now, Spark doesn't have that really. Spark is an open source solution. You can write it in Python and Scala and all that kind of stuff. But then if you're using Python to call Spark APIs, you can't just put that Python into a non-Spark system. So it still is tied to Spark. Now, when we're talking Databricks, there's like a slice of the Databricks runtime, which is proprietary Databricks. Certain commands can't you optimize on top of a Delta table or the DB utils. There's lots of little bits and pieces scattered around, which is kind of the whole sales point of Databricks is they've got these extra premium features dotted around, but they do lock your code in a little bit. It means you can't just pick it up and put it onto an open source um, Spark engine you're running on prep. You know, it means there is that little bit of proprietary code scattered around your generic vanilla Spark. Now, being able to say, I can pick my Azure Databricks up and then put it down into AWS, there's a little bit of refactoring, but not a huge amount. Now, being able to say you can also do that with GCP, it just gives you that extra backing, that extra bit of, you know what, I'm going to build it here, but I have two of the whole cloud platforms I could lift and shift my solution to without massive amounts of rework. Little bits, sure. I could change the connection, so it's probably get an S3 bucket, not an ADLS connection, or a GCS, Google Cloud Storage? I don't know Google. Um, again, options is a good thing. And that just means it's a it's a better option. It's a, it's a more open option. If someone is looking at something like Databrix and going, oh, am I going to get locked in? The more that we see if there's cross compatibility across all the different cloud platforms, it just makes life easier. Also means if you're doing anything like hybrid, if you're deliberately straddling across cloud platforms so that you don't get locked in should one blow up, huh? um, it means you've got that protection. And therefore, if you're using the actual same solution, if you're using Databricks, across GCP and Azure and AWS, you can actually develop like Python packages. You can develop like some, you know, code libraries that actually you push to all environments and they work across the board. You can have standards across your hybrid cloud. So it is all good news for all of us, even if you're not gonna run out and leap and suddenly start using the GCP version of Databricks, it's all good knowledge to know that it's there. It's there should you ever use it. Should there be a dramatic shift in your company and they go, good news, everybody, we're going to lift and shift everything over to GCP. You don't have to then tear it apart and rewrite everything in a different proprietary language or figure out how to do conversions. It's just a case of, you know what? It'll work anyway. So big, big news. That's very, very, very cool. Um, might not change your world immediately, but it's just another sign that if you're currently in that landscape, if you're adopting that, if you're picking up uh, like Databricks uh, as your tool of choice in this area, probably a fair shout, right? So that's the main bit of news I wanted to talk to today. As I said, I will be doing a follow-up video later today looking at the Data Lake House white paper. So Databricks have recently put out a paper talking about the lake house. And when I first looked at it, I'm like, yeah, this is, we know all this. And actually it's, not everyone does, and it hasn't been articulated very well in the past. When the Lake House term came out, a lot of people were like, well, that's marketing buzz. It didn't really mean anything. It didn't really show anything. So actually having a white paper which articulates what it means to Databricks, what it means to the guys behind it, they're actually saying verbosely, this is what it means. This is why we, where we think it's going. And actually, these are all the problems it still has. It's actually a really nice bit of clarity to get out there and talk about. So look out for that video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments what you think about the news, what you think about the things coming up, anything you'd like us to talk about. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.